Today's topic, I'm going to discuss thrift savings plan withdrawal ages and how somebody could be effective if they currently have a thrift savings plan or a TSP and they want to leverage those, that account for some sort of retirement income play or retirement growth play uh, based on different stages throughout their working career. So there's a couple different topics I'm going to basically explain when you hit an age-based in-service withdrawal. Uh, what that means is by not necessarily withdrawing the full amount, but possibly doing a rollover into an IRA and then customizing the IRA while still working for the federal government. Another option would be if you hit your you know, full retirement age that you want to stop working for the federal government altogether. And uh, let's say you're you know, 65, 67, 70 years old, and you say, okay, I have this bucket of TSP money sitting here. How can I make sure to leverage it properly and re fully removing all the TSP monies and leaving nothing in there? How you could do that effectively with the form of a rollover, a form of systematic withdrawals. And then lastly, let's say if you're working for, as a federal employee, maybe for like 10, 15, 20 years, um, and you just decided, hey, I'm going to go more you know, private or maybe work for a state entity, whatever the case is, and you now have this old TSP sitting there, how to make sure that you're leveraging it as opposed to just sitting with the limited their savings plan fund options um, you know, that you have available when you just leave it in there. So there's going to be a couple different things really explaining to you what are all these different options available, what are common mistakes that individuals make, and then how to create some best solutions that will fit your specific goals to make sure that mathematically it's most efficient and it's most appropriate for what you're trying to accomplish. So the first situation that may occur is let's say somebody's working for the federal government and they've already reached age 59 and a half. Maybe they want to still work there for the next five or 10 years, but they want to utilize the opportunity of an in-service withdrawal or, or an in-service rollover into an IRA. What is that? And first off, why would anybody want to do that? The whole concept behind this is with a federal employee, typically they're offered a pension plan. They're offered a social security or social security supplement when they retire. And then their tertiary uh, benefits are this thrift savings plan. Think of it like the bucket. So every year that they're working, they're placing a specific dollar amount into the thrift savings plan. The employer or the federal government is giving them some sort of match. So that controls what the contributions are with this plan. And the rate of return that's coming back based on the different investment options that they choose is going to determine how large or how small this bucket is at the end of the day, the end of the year. So what I just explained to you was the formula on what grows this bucket. The contributions that somebody places in there and the rate of return that's coming back equals the size of this bucket. Well, if somebody hits age 59 and a half and they say, hey, I still want to work for the federal government for another five, six years as an example. So maybe at age 65, that's when they ideally want to retire but they have this nice fat TSP bucket in there, why would it make sense to take this money and roll it over into an IRA? And it all comes down to this rate of return side. The customization availability within a TSP account versus the customization availability within an IRA account and the differences between that. So with the thrift savings plan, what determines that rate of return is going to be how well those investments perform based on about the 15 to 20 different options that somebody has, a G fund, a C fund, an S fund. All those different options are saying, well, hopefully it's going to grow because if it goes down in value, that's going to hurt my thrift savings plan. So when somebody does hit this specific age and they say, hey, I want to, you know, maybe part of my goal is to grow this money for the next five or six years. I know that this is almost a detriment because the rate of return is based on these 15 to 20 different eggs in my basket to choose. There's only so much juice that I could squeeze from this 15 to 20 different options. If an individual took the thrift savings plan, they roll it over into an IRA, the rate of return on an IRA now has thousands of different combinations, thousands of different eggs that they could choose. That they could have a lot more juice to squeeze if they're looking to get a higher rate of return. Maybe they're looking to just have you know, safe growth, uh, you know, protected growth, fixed growth, whatever that is, that the thrift savings plan might not offer from the rate of return side, from those different investment strategies that are available within the thrift savings plan. In this sort of example, what's happening is an individual is taking a portion or they're taking all of their thrift savings plan at age 59 and a half or age 60, really anything above age 59 and a half, doing that rollover, and now their new thrift savings plan account value is going to be sitting at $0. So for the next five to six years, 
this individual is still going to be contributing to the thrift savings plan. They're still going to be getting the same exact match. It didn't matter if this thrift savings plan was sending out a million dollars a week ago, and then they rolled it over and they put that million dollars into an IRA, and now this thrift savings plan is sitting at zero dollars. The contributions, how much the person's contributing and how much they're getting as a match, does not is not determined by how much account balance is sitting in that thrift savings plan. And that's a large misconception. So in this example, a person could go preserve these dollars, place it into an IRA, segment it into different customized IRAs that are going to correlate to their retirement goal at age 65, whether that's trying to do max growth, consistent growth, a combination of max growth, consistent growth, maybe some income, extra income that they're getting at age 65. And the IRAs allow you to create those sorts of strategies that the TSP is limited and they cannot do. So this is why somebody would do this move. And to clear up the screen and just kind of re-explain things nice and slow, an individual has been contributing to their thrift savings plan. They hit age 59 and a half, but they're not, they do not want to retire just yet. Let's say that their savings plan is currently sitting at $500,000. This person wants to retire at age 65. This person has aspirations to try to trigger more income at age 65. They want to make sure that their money is growing on a better aggressive basis or a more conservative fixed basis or a more conservative protected growth basis. Something that the thrift savings plan cannot currently do. So what they would do is take this 500000 they would roll it over to an IRA or multiple IRAs that will each stick to that specific lane, maybe one IRA set up for income, one set up for max growth, one set up for fixed growth, one set up for blended growth, whatever that case might be. Now it's basically allowing these different pieces to work all in tandem with one another with better customization. When this person makes this move to take the 500000 from their thrift savings plan, instead of withdrawing it and throwing it into their checking account, their savings account, what they're doing is they're rolling it over into an IRA. So it's keeping it from a qualified chassis into a qualified chassis so they're not, paying ta they're not getting taxed on those dollars. So starting to that next day after the rollover took place, this thrift savings plan is going to be sitting at $0. But they're still going to be working for the federal government for the next five, six years. So they're going to add contributions into this account. They're going to be receiving matching money into this account. And they're still going to be leveraging the rate of return and those different investment options for the thrift savings plan. So when we fast forward to age 65, this person's going to have an IRA or multiple IRAs that have now been working for the last five to six years customized. And now they're going to have this nice thrift savings plan that was accumulating for the last five or six years. So now that's an additional bucket. So when it comes time for age 65, this federal employee can trigger their Social Security income. They could trigger their Social Security supplement. Then they could trigger maybe IRAs that are set up for additional income. And now they have all this excess monies that they could sit on. Maybe at this point, age 65, they take their thrift savings plan again, and they do a new rollover into an IRA because they severed employment, they retired, and they're, they're essentially done with the thrift savings plan going forward. This is why somebody would do this in-service eligible, this in-service rollover while they're still working. And in order to be eligible for that, they would need to be at least age 59 and a half, or how it currently stands, need to be at least age 59 and a half. So it's not like they have to, the only time that they could move their, their savings plan is if they stop working for the federal government, they could do this as they are still working for the federal government. And a lot of companies do not offer these sorts of benefits like a federal government does with their employees with this flexibility within the thrift savings plan. Um, so I hope that this portion makes sense. This is ultimately showing you how an individual has different get out options to leverage their dollars, leverage their chips the right way, and still make sure that it correlates to their specific age goal, age based goal, and uh, really, you know, financial goal. The next option is very similar, except for it's when this person stops working. So maybe this individual wanted to retire early. They wanted to retire before age 59 and a half. When they retire, they're eligible to take the money and roll it over into an IRA account. Or maybe they're 65, 70 years old. They could take that thrift savings plan and roll it over to the IRA account for the same reasons that I mentioned before for the in-service rollover. Now, be very careful with this because the difference between a TSP and an IRA when looking to retire comes down to 59 and a half rules. So if somebody wants to retire before the age of 59 and a half, they're not going to be pulling distributions from an IRA account. Because an IRA account, if an individual tries to take out withdrawals before age 59 and a half, they can get dinged with a 10% penalty on every dollar that they're pulling because they did not wait until that age 59. With a thrift savings plan, 
an individual could leave money in a thrift savings plan, pull dollars out on a systematic withdrawal process from, let's say, if somebody wanted to retire at age 56, they could take out withdrawals at 56, 57, 58, 59. Then at age 60, they could take out withdrawals from their IRA so that they're staying underneath the cusp of getting hit with that penalty. So this is very important because rather than if somebody fully retires, like as an example at their age 60 or 65, they could take the thrift savings plan, take the full amount, roll it over into an IRA, and then customize the IRA into different IRAs and you know create a strategy that would give them income, create a strategy that would give them emergency needs, create a strategy that would give them growth-related needs. If they're trying to create a type of income strategy with an IRA, but let's say they're 56 years old, they can't do that. They have to wait until at least age 59 and a half. Because if they do that before, they could get dinged with a 10% penalty and full taxation. So this is where being very measured and making sure you're creating some sort of laddering strategy could help out if you want to retire earlier than 59 and a half and you're working for the federal government. So your retirement situation might look something similar to this. It might say an individual was working for the federal government for 30 years. This person is age 56 and now he wants to retire. At age 56, this person is going to have pension income come to them through the government, through the, as a federal employee, and also a Social Security supplement coming to them. The combination between pension income and Social Security income, let's say, is $60,000 per year. This person needs $70,000 per year of retirement income. This individual has a $500,000 thrift savings plan. There's a gap of $10,000. Maybe this might mean leaving $50,000 into the thrift savings plan, taking $450,000, rolling it over into an IRA or multiple IRAs that serve a specific purpose. The $50,000 that's sitting in this thrift savings plan age 56 could create a withdrawal strategy to say $10,000 at age 56, $10,000 at age 57, $10,000 at age 58, $10,000 at age 59. So out of the 50,000 sitting there, 40,000 was used up with about a 10,000 cushion that a person could kind of leverage within that in-between stage. As that's happening, maybe the 450,000 that was rolled over to an IRA, it had one of those IRAs, it created a separate IRA for $100,000 that was gonna generate $10,000 of income starting at this person's age 60. This is IRA number one. IRA number two, so that's 100,000 out of the 450. IRA number two, maybe it was 50,000 just sitting into an IRA money market account. And now they have 300,000 remaining with IRA number three, that's set up for a fixed account. Number four, that's set up for a protected growth account. And then IRA number five, which is set up for a pure growth account which with a lot of risk and different investment related strategies. So we call it investments. With this 30,000 foot view, the individual did not take the full 500,000 and roll that into an IRA because that would have hurt him with 59 and a half rules when he needed cash flow for years 56, for ages 56, 57, 58, and 59. The cash flow strategy was created at age 56 with an IRA that's going to trigger at age 60. The thrift savings plan monies that this person left aside, this is what was generating the laddering strategy to give him income from age 56 through age 60. Age 60, IRA number one gets triggered for lifetime income. Then IRA number two is sitting there as an emergency need. And then IRAs number three, four, and five are all working with some sort of growth-related strategy to make sure that, that those dollars are keeping pace with inflation, they're being efficient, they're being diversified properly, and they're correlating to this person's goals. At age 60, they could touch the dollars, they could mix and match, they could leverage, you know, a death benefit related strategy, a uh, vacation related strategy, maybe increase in income. There's a whole slew of different things. But what happened was the person didn't just retire at age 56, say, oh, I'm just going to leave everything in my thrift savings plan because I don't know what to do. By, by basically sitting on the sidelines, it was hurting that individual. It was not allowing their chips to grow properly to accomplish their need. By utilizing the different mechanisms available, they could now have a much happier retirement, have much more confidence throughout their retirement years because they utilize their chips the right way. They created laddering strategies, they created withdrawal strategies, 
They created growth strategies, safe strategies, emergency related strategies, as opposed to just kind of sitting on the sidelines and just hoping everything would work out. So that's a very important aspect when somebody is eligible to retire and making sure that they might not want to leave or want to take all the monies and roll it over into an IRA, maybe leave a portion of dollars into their savings plan while you're taking another portion of dollars into the IRA related strategy so that it's maximizing your opportunity. And lastly, let's say if somebody was working for the federal government and they were working there 5, 10, 15 years and they stopped working there, they went over to a private you know, institution as an example. Well, they might have their thrift savings plan that's still sitting there. This thrift savings plan is just because they're no longer working, it's now just having a rate of return that's tied to the different investment strategies within a thrift savings plan. There's going to be limited eggs, limited options, but the 15 to 20 different options that somebody could choose. Why would they do that when they could take their money that's sitting in that old thrift savings plan, roll it over into an IRA so that the IRA could be customized to either grow better, uh, be better safe accumulation, be leveraged for an income play later, be leveraged for an emergency need later, uh, leverage it for Roth conversions possibly. There's a whole slew of different things this person can do. But when they sever employment, that now makes them eligible to take the thrift savings plan and not withdraw it, but roll it over into something else that could, you know, put the, uh, give, make it a more mathematically efficient or effective route. So the most common mistakes that occur when somebody's trying to take a withdrawal from their thrift savings plan or understanding the concept of rolling it over is they're not leveraging the opportunities. An individual that's a federal employee or was a federal employee has many opportunities that on the private side, that individual may not have those same opportunities. You have ultimately a three-legged monster. A majority of federal employees have a three-legged stool, a three-legged monster when it comes to retirement. That comes to pension income, that comes to social security income or social security supplement, and then the thrift savings plan. Rather than just leave the money on the sidelines because it just feels safe, you could take advantage of this and make sure that it's working for you so that it's giving you further peace of mind in retirement so you don't have to go back to work. You don't have to work a part-time job. You're saying, okay, I understand what I could do with the thrift savings plan. I understand how by placing into customized IRAs, by creating different strategies, it could go in tandem with what my lifestyle will be throughout my retirement years so I never have to go back to work. I'm putting the correct safety mechanisms in place. I'm creating the correct growth-related strategies, putting those in place so that it's not going to hurt me in the long run and have me force me to go back to work when I'm in my 70s and my in, when I'm in my 80s when I definitely don't want to go back to work at that point. So that's where leveraging, not leveraging the opportunities can really bite somebody in the ass. Uh, not having a plan. That's the most important thing. Uh, a thrift savings plan is nothing more than a portfolio. It's not a plan. Having a plan, making sure that, yes, you could use this as a tool how to use that effectively. Can you use that account and roll it over into an IRA and create more effective strategies, more effective tools because of customization? And the answer is typically yes. The other kind of tertiary common mistake is not taking advantage of a Roth. With a traditional thrift savings plan, those are pre-tax qualified retirement accounts, meaning that whenever somebody tries to take out withdrawals and taking their monies and, and they're basically converting that into cash, uh, you know, throwing that into their checking savings account, that's taking it from a qualified account and placing it into a non-qualified account. When that happens, you get taxed on those dollars. So what a Roth IRA does or a Roth conversion opportunity does is you could take a qualified thrift savings plan. You could open up a Roth IRA. You could do, you can convert monies from your thrift savings plan into the Roth IRA so that now when it's sitting in the Roth, all the money that's generating that's compounding within that Roth is growing tax free and you can pull your monies out tax free. So there has to be a very specific measurement when you're doing this because when you're doing the conversion, any dollars that you're converting, those are going to be taxable at that point of conversion. So you might want to splice it up if let's say somebody has a $500,000 account as an example. Instead of going and, and converting the full $500,000 in one year, they might want to convert $50,000 per year for the next 10 years as an example to make sure that they're easing that burden of the Roth conversion of, of their taxes You know, each time that they're doing that conversion year. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to do the Roth conversion. So it really just depends on that individual situation. Some of the best solutions when somebody is eligible to roll over their, their savings plan, whether that's an in-service rollover where they're still working for the federal government, but they hit age 59 and a half. Uh, maybe they've severed employment, they hit retirement age, and they want to leverage that properly. Or uh, maybe they, you know, they stopped working altogether and they're working for a new company, and but they just have this, you know, their savings plan bucket that's sitting there how to make sure that you could take advantage of those different aspects. I coined a term called the three things scenario. 
There's three things that every individual needs to figure out before they're retired, or if they're currently retired, on how to stay retired forever. The number one goal is making sure that you're generating enough income so that you don't have to go back to work. You want to make sure that your assets, whether that's pension income, social security income, um, any sort of you know supplemental income, that when you stop working, your income is going to be greater than or equal to your expenses. Your existing assets, such as your thrift savings plan, such as IRA accounts, such as savings accounts, non-qualified accounts, whatever that is, those are different buckets that an individual could trigger, could turn on for, for as withdrawal income streams or income-related strategies. They could create income-related strategies from that to make sure that their income is being covered so that that individual, as they're living throughout their retirement years, they never have to worry about outliving their, their expenses. If they live to 120 years old, their income will still be generated to them if done properly. They don't have to go back to work or completely change their lifestyle because they burnt through all their accounts. That's step one. Step two for peace of mind is making sure that an individual has an oh my gosh uh, fund, uh, an emergency fund available to them. So how to make sure that you're setting that up properly. And then step number three is really the fund monies. Making sure that your monies are growing. Whatever you don't use for step one income and step two emergency, you're growing those on the most effective basis. Uh, you're, you're, you're correlating that growth or the growth strategy with your risk tolerance. So if somebody is more risk tolerant, they would be more aggressive, maybe leverage more investments versus more risk averse, might be more towards fixed or the protected growth accounts, different things like that. Um, but ultimately, the three things that every individual needs to figure out figure out before they're retired, or if they're currently retired, has to stay retired forever, are these three things. Using the smallest amount of dollars, only as much as necessary into each segment so that it's optimized um, you know, effectively. We do things a little bit different. We basically take this three thing scenario and we magnify that. Uh, we have a proprietary process. It's a trademark process known as a retirement diet plan. No one else in the nation has access to this. We have the best systems. We have the best income related strategies. We have proprietary products that other advisory groups cannot use. And we use all these different tools in conjunction with one another to make sure that this person is confident to say, okay, mathematically, it would make sense to go and do this rollover and go with, you know, company X, Y, and Z or utilize strategy X, Y, and Z so that it's correlating, it's giving you that peace of mind and you know all the pros, all the cons of why you would make that decision. Um, if you are interested in this video and you would like to speak to a specialist, feel free to give our 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002. When calling in, you would reference this video, say, hey, I, you know, I, I reviewed video online entitled the TSP withdrawal age, and we would make sure that you're placed over with the correct specialist that is savvy to understand these things. Um, really based on your state, that could mean different sorts of solutions than other states that, that have, uh, you know, maybe more proprietary solutions. Uh, so it really just depends, but ultimately we would have a conversation with you and really see where your point A, where you are currently, point B, where your ideal retirement date is, how to get, to, how to make sure that you're getting from point A to point B successfully and then from point B until date of death successfully. As morbid as that sounds. Um, if you are interested, also feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you got to have access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much, guys.